Hi everybody, my name is Kate. I'm a speech and language therapist. I um, have just set up working um, independently. So my company is called We Can Communicate with a K at the end rather than a C. Um, and this is the lovely Rosie Fox. Rosie, would you like to say hello? Hi, I'm Rosie Fox and I run Fox Tots Baby and Toddler Music Group in South East London, but currently online. And yes, so back to Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so what we wanted to do with this video is that part of my uh, passion with my company and my business is that I feel it's really important to share useful uh, evidence-based and simple information with parents, carers, grandparents, whoever, um, even early as professionals, people who have any kind of role with young children, um, to share some really clear messages about the simple things that you can do at home, when you're in the park, when you're out and about, to support your child with their communication skills. And one of the things that you can do is singing. And one of the things that Rosie Fox can do really well is singing and music classes. So we thought we would get together to just kind of share some of our experiences and some of the research and theory around how great singing and music classes are, but also for me to kind of come in and share a bit more about how it's so useful for language development. Um, and we're hoping that this video is for anybody that's got children. So don't, please don't feel that you have to have a concern about your child's communication skills to get something from this video. We're hoping that everybody would um, enjoy it if you've got young children and find that there's something useful. Uh, so Rosie, do you want to start just telling us a little bit about what Fox Dots is and how you set it up and started and everything? Yeah, sure. So my husband, Ben, and I started Fox Dots when our own little girl was six months old. Ruby was six, uh, six months. And we wrote the core songs for the classes and we included some uh, songs that were sort of well known as well. But when Ben and I wrote the music that, that, that we say as Fox Hots music, uh, we weren't setting out to make it educational as such. We okay. weren't setting out to sort of follow any kind of curriculum or anything like that. We just wanted to have fun with the kids. But as time has gone on uh, over the sort of first year of the, the classes, we had quite a lot of feedback from parents, who, some of whom were teachers, saying that actually the songs quite by chance, by accident, were actually educational and geared towards helping uh, develop cognitive and motor and language skills. So yeah, it, it, quite by accident, it became an educational group as well as a fun group. The fun, fun is the main element of Fox <laughs> Um But yeah, we, we, we do have a lot of lovely feedback from parents saying that their kids are, are help, it's helping their development, which is lovely. Yeah. Well, and you know, I'm, I'm not at all surprised. As a parent who comes to Fox Tots, I can definitely say yes, it's fun. I love it. I don't love hearing the songs around and round and round and round in my head, oh. but that's okay. But one of the things that the singing is doing, and one of the reasons why singing is so useful for language development is the level of repetition that you have in songs. So we all know songs repeat the choruses lots and lots of times, but there's also be sort of phrases and the lyrics will all be lots, there'll be lots and lots of repetition in them. Um, and not only is the repetition within the song, we tend to sing the same songs to our children again and again and again and again as well so that repetition is really useful for children with learning language and we know that children need to hear words sometimes hundreds of times before they'll start to understand them and certainly before they'll start to use those words themselves yeah, yeah no for sure i mean in the classes that that i run the children learn lots of different things um i'll talk about repetition in a bit but they learn uh, up and down they learn left and right they learn how to clean their teeth Mm -hmm. they, which includes up and down as well. We clean our teeth up and down at Fox Tots, not, not like that. <laughs> um, apparently that's the right way. Um, and they learn different colours, they learn different musical instruments, um, they learn to play peekaboo, they even learn to pack away, uh, which I guess a lot of lovely feedback from parents and grandparents saying, oh, they're packing away now at home, they're packing away their own things. So that's very important. And mm -hmm. they also learn, we do a song called uh, The Beanbag Box, um, and we learn to put the beanbag on our head. So they're learning these motor skills as well, putting the beanbag on your head, on your knee, on your foot, and then we drop it with a plop. Here's the beanbag. We drop it with a plop. Um, so yeah, and uh, apparently uh, we also like using 
other things in Beanbag Bob, don't yeah, you? Yeah, unfortunately we do. My little girl, she's one, and she we must have said head or something while she was feeding herself a bit of yogurt, because the next thing we know, the yogurt was on the head. And it was definitely in response to that. And we'd done your class that day. We'd been singing that song a lot. I am convinced you are responsible I'm for sorry. that hair wash we had to do that night, because it was just everywhere, all over the place. <laughs> Um, well, she will need that. Uh, moving on to my next point about um, music and the effect it has, um, that Freya will need that yogurt for her um, her energy because music is basically a workout for the brain. It uses the same cogs. Music and linguistics share the same cogs in the brain. So when you're listening to music, it's firing up those cogs and uh, stimulating the brain and helping with learning and memory and importantly, language. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, to explain that a bit more around the cogs what's happening is is that singing has a lot of rhythm to it and musical classes and you know we're certainly doing that with you when we're bashing out the beat with our claves and shaking things and stuff so every song has a lot of rhythm to it anyway um and some rhyme and by singing those songs with rhythm and rhyme in them what you're doing is you're using these skills that we use not only for our language development though we do use them for language development they're, they're called phonological awareness skills um, and what that is is a child's awareness and we, and we all have this the awareness of the different sounds that we're hearing um, but what those what they're also doing is so you've got your kind of your musical cog here your language cog here and then you've got this third one which is your literacy cog and those rhyming and rhythm skills are directly influencing and directly supporting I should say probably more than influencing your early literacy skills so being able to identify rhyme certainly and being able to identify rhythm are two really early literacy skills which really contribute to later to reading skills which of course then leads on to academic success as well so not only are you kind of working on your memory and you've said you do some work around motor skills but actually that early those early literacy skills are also being supported and that rhythm and that rhyme awareness does also help with um with your language development as well but it's having more than just that that one impact really hmm. wow I'm, I'm creating geniuses, hopefully, in my classes. Uh, yeah, so the, the, what you were saying about the rhythm and the lyric recognition and expanding the ability to learn and maintain information week to week. I have that, the repetition thing, I have key songs that I do every week. So the, the class will vary somewhat with its structure, but every week I do the same songs in certain points of the class and i think yeah. for the kids that creates i think they need that repetition you watch any kids show night garden or anything like that or twirly Boos, there are bits in it every single time mm -hmm. that, um are repeated and the kids it's a sense of security uh it helps them to associate certain things with other certain things yeah. and yeah just a sense of routine and music mm -hmm. and yeah, they'll recall the actions. When they're old enough, they'll recall the words. It's lovely hearing from mums, you know, seeing tiny babies doing, patting their head. They might not put the beanbag there yet, but they'll pat their head. You'll, you'll hear, I believe I might give you a little sample of it later, but okay. you'll, you'll hear that I ask them to pat the beanbag when they put it on their head. And they might not have the, 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 the beanbag there, but they'll pat their head and they'll pat their knee. And then comes later on the beanbag and then comes the words. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of mums, dads, grandpas, carers coming to me, you know, emailing me excitedly saying, oh, she, she or he has sung her first Hey, 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 or her first park song where we sing about going up and down. So these, and they, these are the repeated ones, Hey, 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 park song, Beanbag Bob. And they are always the ones, I mean, obviously, because they hear them every week, but they are, I think it's really valuable uh, learning tool to have that repetition. Yes, absolutely. And the, the reason that will be helping even those really little ones that you're talking about is because also the tune. So going back to that rhythm awareness, that tune, even if they don't understand the words that you're saying, that tune, hey, 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 I, I know it. I know it very well now. Beautiful. That tune says to them, Fox Tots is about to start. Yes. And when you do it at the end, but a little bit slower and a bit quieter, and you're saying, we're gonna put things back in the bag, you don't need to understand the words to know uh, that tune, that means 
I'm going to have to put all the things back in Rosie's either big sack or mum and dad and parents at home have got maybe an alternative, but they'll certainly know that means that this is about to end. Um, And that is incredibly helpful. um, And actually really helpful for children, particularly if they're on the autistic spectrum, because Mm -hmm. that, that knowing what's going to happen is really reassuring for children, Mm -hmm. um, for all children really. um, But particularly children who are on the spectrum, they'll find that really, really reassuring. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's such a, a lovely, magical thing, seeing them enjoying themselves. And, and music is a magical thing, I firmly believe, because it does release that uh, dopamine um, hormone in your body, which makes you feel good and happy. Yeah. When you sing, when you listen to music, when you perform, you feel happy. I said you feel happy. We all have those down days when, you know, we've got to go to work and you know we all have them and every time if i ever have one of those days which isn't very often all i need to do is see those little faces and sing the music and it's it's just like a medicine it's it's yeah. wonderful music yeah. music is medicine <laughs> and and when you're feeling happy you absorb more you you learn more you absorb more because your body is more receptive and yeah yeah rosie you are you're so right and i think that that sense of shared enjoyment i think it's really useful for the children and for the adults so I have noticed when I'm having a bit of a rubbish morning just finding Freya a bit tricky either coming to your class when we used to come um, to the pub or just now logging in I feel better having done it as well even and I know that she certainly does I can see that in her mood and her behavior Mm -hmm. Um, and I think having that that shared enjoyment that shared experience is really helpful but it also it's it's really nice having that experience to help with develop that bond between you and your child and that's something else that's really helpful for developing communication have you heard of a term um parentese or it used to be called motherese oh no so that's you know how um people quite often with a newborn baby they pick them up and they'll use that sing-songy high-pitched voice oh you're so cute oh look at you and and the baby responds to that that's been given a term it's called it used to be called mother ease and then researchers realized that actually not just mothers could talk to babies like this and did talk to babies like this and got got with the program that dads were involved too um so it's now called parentees um but that's a really useful tool to support children's communication particularly in that first year of life when um it might feel like your baby isn't learning masses of communication skills or lots of communication isn't happening because they're not particularly in the really really early days not doing loads of pointing and looking and smiling to show you that they're following and understanding but what's interesting is is that there isn't uh or there's there's not really any cultures in the world that doesn't use parentese with newborn babies. Um, but what they found is that actually parents, when they use parentese or when they're singing, the baby actually tends to singing even more than they attend to parentese. And parentese is something that we have naturally evolved as a, as a species to do to support our children with communication developments. So it's even singing is even better than that. And I certainly found when I was struggling to think of things to say to my daughter, sometimes I was, it's only so many times I can talk to you about unpacking the dishwasher or <laughs> mum's brushing her teeth or I'm just so tired. I can't think of anything to say. If I just sang her a song, she was happy and I felt a little bit better because of the dopamine and things that you've talked about already. Yeah. But actually, what a blessed relief to know that actually doing that wasn't just about making me feel a bit better. It actually was really good for her as well to hear me singing that song, even if it was Coldplay singing along on the radio. That was fine, too. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't like a bit of Coldplay? (laughs) Um, Rosie, have you got any other big points that you wanted to say about how you think singing is really helping children and your musical classes are really helping children with their development? Oh, I just, well, I mean, I've pretty much touched on everything, but I think just a final note of just how important I feel, deeply feel that music is to kids and to their development and in education. Uh, I mean, you find music everywhere in, in education. I mean, I'm a, a Sesame Street girl back in the back in the days of, you know, the good old days of Sesame Street. They used singing to le- in learning all the time, you know, and it's still around, you know, ABCs, your one, two, threes animals old my dog it, it's just used so much for learning i think yeah i mean I, I i just can't bang that in enough about how important music is i mean i could <laughs> say that when people people ask me oh how young do you take your your babies at fox tots and i say well i mean my youngest sign-ups have been five weeks and they can they can yeah. barely focus but 
a lot of times the mums love coming and meeting other mums. Um, yeah. I believe, I believe that at five weeks they do get something. I believe they get it in the womb, you know. Yeah. But, um, so I say to anyone, to everyone who asks me, anything goes, you come along and if you like it, if you enjoy it, then great. Right. I'd love to yeah. see you again. If you'd rather wait till the baby's sitting up at about six months, then they come back. But more often than not, if they come with a baby of five or 12 weeks, they they stick around. Right. And that, yeah. that's lovely. Yeah. That's really yeah. lovely. So yeah, you're never too young and you're certainly never too old to start learning music. So yeah, um, that that's it. That's it really. Lovely. Thank you. Well, I think I would just like to summarise kind of my key points yeah. um, just to make sure that, that it's been really clear about how the rhythm and the rhyme is supporting language development. It's supporting your early literacy skills. The repetition is wonderful. The shared enjoyment and creating that bond, particularly like you're saying with, you know, with a five week old baby, just having that shared experience is really, really lovely. Um, and I read a paper only this week about singing and language and just the, the benefits you can't you can't really list them they're so numerous but they even found that with children who had done some sort of singing and musical classes or had just had lots of exposure to singing it even helped with their spoken grammar they even were better with their spoken grammar than compared to a control group that hadn't had those early experiences of singing and music so I, I completely echo your thoughts really it's a really useful thing to do so I hope that if you're watching this and you're thinking I'm, I'm not sure how to support my child with their communication development I've either got a really little one or I'm a bit worried singing is a really useful tool um, and the great thing about singing is is that you can find lots of classes that are doing it Rosie Fox has got sessions in her classes and I would highly recommend them as a parent I have to be honest I'm biased I love them I go every week um, but the other great thing about singing is, is you can do it anyway. You can sing the wheels on the bus, on the bus, uh, if you're brave enough. Um, but you can do it anyway. It doesn't need to cost you money to start singing with your children. Um, but I would really recommend Fox Tots. And I think you're going to do a song for us. Is that right? I am. I'm going to put my mic on. I'm not. Everybody who knows me will be very relieved here. I'm not joining in with the singing because I cannot sing. It doesn't matter when you're singing to your child. It doesn't matter when you're putting a video out on social media and you want to look slightly professional. Oh, well, I hope I, I, hope I can manage that. So we're going to do the beanbag bop um, of which we spoke. So beanbags at the ready. Um, I'll do the song and then, and then Kate will, will sign us off. So here we go. Hang on. I hope you can hear it okay. Turn it up. Put the bean bag on your head, pat it with your hand. Put the bean bag on your head, pat it with your hand. Put the bean bag on your head, pat it with your hand. Bean bag happy, bean bag slappy, that's the bean bag bop. Just grab my knee, can you see my knee? Oh, it's got a bruise. Put the bean bag on my knee, pat it with your hand. Put the bean bag on your knee. Pat it with your hand. Put the bean bag on your knee. Pat it with your hand. Bean bag happy, bean bag slappy. That's the bean bag bop. Now you've learned this happy bean bag too. Very nice dropping. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's turn that mic off. Oh, we doubled it again. Stop. <laughs> there we go. Do you know, I was just thinking as we're doing this, oh, if Freya wakes up and hears that, she's going to go berserk and think, oh, yeah, it's You're going to be at the yogurts. <laughs> oh. um, so I hope I hope that you have found that video useful, Rosie. I really enjoyed talking to you about all these these shared benefits that we can see of of music and singing and sharing those together with young children. Okay. Um, my Instagram page and my Facebook page, I put something up pretty much every day, just a top tip, something that you can do to help support your child with communication skills. Um, and we will have a link to my page and Rosie is doing exactly the same. She's got lots of different classes going on during the week. Um, so we will put links up to both of our web pages, our Facebook pages, our Instagram pages, you know, all we're trying to be across all of those different technical things. Um, so if you do have any concerns and you'd like some more information, please do just click on the links. If you'd like to join Rosie in Fox Tots, I highly recommend it. Um, so again, please just follow the links. Um, but if you do have any concerns about your child's communication skills, please do always feel free to just message me, DM me on Instagram, whatever. I'm really happy. Just put a question as a comment. That's fine. Um, I'm really happy to do my best to respond to those messages and get back to people. Um, so that's everything from me. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, Thank you. Me. That's a pleasure. Thanks for asking me. It's been lovely. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>